If you're wondering to yourself whether or not your garden even needs fertilizer, or you may be wondering, is it time to fertilize? Then this video is for you because we're going to look at what the soil and the plants are telling you based on a number of different factors, none of which are expensive soil testing, to help you determine if fertilizer is needed or if you are just fine leaving things as they are. And you'd be shocked how often that actually happens where you just are best off doing nothing organically or synthetically. The snitches get stitches rule apparently doesn't apply when it comes to plants because they are going to be your OG tattletales. So I'm going to kind of run over real quick what these signs and symptoms look like solely because I think that you can just Google it and it's really easy to find. But what I do want to teach you is if you do see those signs, how do you know for sure it is a nutrient issue and not something else? So number one is yellowing leaves. That's nitrogen, possibly. Purpling leaves could be something like a phosphorus deficiency. Yellow veins could be something possibly like air, iron or magnesium. Blossom end rot, we know, could be calcium. Again, you can Google all of these. But the way to know if this is a true nutrient deficiency versus if it's something else entirely is how many of the plants in the space have that same issue. Because every plant, regardless of what type of plant they are, will react the same if the soil conditions are lacking something. So if the marigolds and the tomatoes and the petunias all have the same signs and symptoms of yellow leaves, it's possible that you have low nitrogen. If it's only onesie twosies that have the issue, the problem may lie in a root system problem. So either the conditions environmentally above ground that the plant is in are not meant to be, meaning too much sun, maybe not enough sun. It's pretty obvious. I mean, the list there is truly endless. So before you jump on the bandwagon of, yep, yellow leaves on this plant means the whole bed's lacking nitrogen or whatever the case is, just keep in mind that the problem may not be systemic. It could be just localized to that single plant. So here are two soil tests I want you to try at home. Very easy to do. Number one is in regards to calcium because people are super hyper fixated on calcium and whether or not it's needed in the soil because they've got Enron, et cetera, and so forth. Let's talk about those guys first. So what you want to do is grab a spoonful of soil out of the garden. Once it is completely bone dry, you want to take a little bit of vinegar, like a dropper full, and actually drop it onto the soil surface. There's two things that's going to happen. One, it's going to fizz. Two, it's not going to fizz. If it does fizz, that's a sign that that soil is really high in calcium carbonate, aka you have some free-floating calcium in that system. Now, if it doesn't fizz, it doesn't mean necessarily that there is no calcium present, but what it does tell you is that you don't have any calcium that's currently available. The calcium that is there is potentially locked up in some form, and therefore it's not going to treat what we call the acute issue at hand, meaning you're going to benefit from some form of bioavailable calcium fertilizer right here, right now. Now, that does not mean eggshells, because again, that is not going to treat the acute need of the plant. That is like an investment for the future. And if you don't believe me, put a little bit of vinegar on an eggshell and watch it not fizz. That's your indicator that that calcium is nowhere near accessible for the plants. And the next one is testing your soil texture. Now, I have a whole video on that. It's right here. Go check that out. If I forget to link it, let me know, because I probably will. The important part here is the texture itself. A sandier soil can and will release nutrients much quicker than a clay soil. If you've thought to yourself, I just fertilized recently, what the heck's going on? Everything's indicating a fertilizer deficiency and you have a sandy soil, it probably is a nutrient deficiency. On the other hand, if you've got a clay soil, you think to yourself, I just fertilized, how is this possible? It's probably not a fertilizer issue and there is definitely something else going on in that case. So say you don't wanna go through any of the process of figuring out if your plant needs fertilizer. You just want to make sure that the plant has the best chances it can get without too much of you having to decipher or mind read what the soil and the plants are trying to tell you. That leaves you with the question, what exactly does fertilizer do to the soil when it's added? Organic versus synthetic. So let's talk about that next. Number one is that synthetic is not always harmful. A meta-analysis done in 2020, it looked at 114 different studies published on synthetic fertilizers. And what it found is that responsible use of synthetic fertilizer not only maintained, but in some cases enhanced the microbial life of the soil. And this was very specific to bacteria, for example, 
because bacteria utilize these really bioavailable forms of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in their process of decomposition. And it basically is like a false buffet for these microbes. Now, in 2018, there was a review done and published in Global Change Biology. And this did indicate that excessive use of nitrogen fertilizer and or prolonged use of synthetic nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium fertilizer decreased the fungal bodies in the soil, which makes sense because if you watched my video on inoculants and the world of fungus, you know that if the nutrient is present, the symbiosis is not going to be forced. It's not going to be because it's not necessary. So that does make sense. 2022, there was a Frontiers in Microbiology paper done, and it looked at the world of organic fertilizer. Now, very specifically, things like compost and manure. What it indicated is that while, yes, it did enhance the microbial activity of the soil, in some cases, it actually locked up things like nitrogen. If there was a lot of decomposition or mineralization that still had to take place inside of that. But I do believe truly that the answer is somewhere in the middle between using synthetics and organics because the organics are going to help with the structure, the physicality, even the chemistry to an extent of that soil. And the synthetics are going to help with the plants and treating very acute problems. And therefore, I use both repeatedly in my garden all the time. Here is the reason for why I use both. The pros for synthetics can include immediate nutrient availability, treating that acute need. You can determine the exact available levels of N, P, and K, meaning you're less likely to over-fertilize, to put in too much nitrogen, for example. And it is really effective at delivering that nutrients in a soil that is cooler, because in cooler soils, microbial activity goes down. It's much lower. And so because of this, mineralization and decomposition does not take place at the same speed. Now, the cons here is that if it's over-applied, it will leach. And the other con is that if you repeatedly use it for years and years and don't put any sort of buffering agents or treat that soil in some way, and you don't rehabilitate the soil through additions of organic material or just general care of the soil, then it can acidify that soil over time. So organic fertilizers, the pros here is that it is the OG version of a slow-release fertilizer. There's less leaching that obviously takes place when this is the case. The other really big benefit is that there is a slight amount and a reasonable amount of micronutrients present. So if you had a micronutrient deficiency that you believed you had, I would prefer you to use an organic compost and put that on before you were to grab a synthetic micronutrient formula. Nine times out of 10, because the synthetic version of that can be incredibly harmful and irreversible damage can be done. Whereas the organic side, just the continual adding of those items will include not only the macro, the secondary macro, but also those micronutrients. The physical effects when it comes to synthetics versus organics, the synthetic actually does nothing for the structure, absolute zero for the structure physically. And if you were to use solely synthetic fertilizers day in, day out, what will happen is your soil will just lack organic material and therefore it will become incredibly compacted and hard, heavily aggregated, and this can lead to a lot of frustration on the side of the gardener. So that's a reason for why we don't want to go solely or synthetics. Now, organic fertilizers, when it comes to physicality, it is nothing but good things. We can improve the texture and the tilth of the soil. We can actually increase the water holding capacity. The risk of erosion is hugely reduced for wind, water, etc. The moral of the story is yes, you do need to fertilize because you are taking away from that soil. But I don't think you need to go above and beyond for this by any stretch of the imagination. You're not doing heavy duty agriculture in your backyard. The answer lies in a mix of both synthetic and organic. And the reason for that is because we want to nurture the soil's structure, its micronutrient capacity, while also supporting the plants, particularly if we have heavy feeders. So the remedy that I use every single year, like clockwork, is top dressing with some manure or compost, usually about an inch, incorporating that into the surface of that soil. And then for the remainder of the year, I use a synthetic fertilizer for the most part to actually water a lot of my plants. I do that once a week. It's on Saturdays. It's like clockwork. I can't screw it up. This means I don't over fertilize and I don't under fertilize either because if I'm watering on a Saturday and I'm not watering with fertilizer, alarm bell should be ringing. 
in my head, but that doesn't always happen because, yeah. This applies solely to in-ground and raised beds using mineral soil. If we're talking containers, we are talking a whole different beast in ball game. So if you want a video on that, then please let me know in the comments down below. Geek Crew, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!